Houston coach. He has Chattanooga on the verge of another Southern Conference title. Uh, these two coaches have really had an extraordinary run, and uh, Jimmy Gary in particular. It's a building program for him, and finally the fruits of his labor are reflected. Over and back off the start. Wofford the turnover, Jackie Carmen. Our starting lineups presented throughout the Ingalls Southern Conference Basketball Championships by Ingalls Markets. And for the Chattanooga Mocs, interesting combination of players. Some holdovers like Cornelius and Addie Porter. Newcomers who've really made a difference. Yaz Waziradine, Raven Thompson, the freshman of the year. And then the Swiss Army Knife, as Sean Poppy calls her, and returnee Sigrun Olivsada. That's her with the ball, the native of Iceland. Try to feed inside to Cornelius. It'll go the other way. And the Wofford Terriers, first ever number one seed in this tournament. A couple of years ago, they played the Mercer Bears in the title game. It's the Bears made it another championship within the past decade. In addition to Schultz, Rachel Rose, the player of the year in the SoCon, the two of them with seven steals the other day in their semifinal win, matching a SoCon single game mark. What I think is interesting about both these teams and, and the similarity between the two is that neither coach will go very deep into their bench. Uh, Chattanooga probably seven deep. Jimmy Garrity said basically he's going to play his top five till they wear out. He's got a five he can roll out there. He feels all can score. Lily Hatton with the ball just forced the turnover. Helen Matthews foul issues for her in this tournament, but she's contributed. Can't get her first shot of the day to go down. Chattanooga. Trying to get another 20-win season for their program. 18 Southern Conference titles. 15 NCAA tourney trips. Wes Moore and Jim Foster built an impressive program. Sean Poppy trying to continue that tradition. Olive Stoddard strikes first. Feet just on the line, but that shot, it felt good from here. Uh, you could see that she has that nice high arc on it. And... Uh, was very confident in taking that shot, breaking the seal, and getting Chattanooga on the boards right away. Matthews, at times a point guard, other times you feel like she's an off guard. She's an X-Factor kind of player, but she misses again. Porter gets her to her roommate, Cornelius. Thompson. Shot clock at 10. Olive Sauter. Whistle away from the ball. Three-second violation. Perhaps the first one we've seen called in this tournament, either men's or women's. The third member of our team is Aaron Summers courtside. Aaron. Thanks, Pete. Chattanooga's been chasing Wofford all season long, finishing just one game behind them for the regular season title. And head coach Sean Poppy said that his team actually is coming in here really confident today because of the way they were able to come back in that first game against Furman. Then being down and fighting their way to a victory really has fueled them for the rest of this weekend. So they just got to come in here aggressive and ready to go. So far, it's been a close one. Tight times. Jackie Carmen giving the Terriers the lead with a three. As Waziradine, top scorer for Chattanooga, is denied. Carmen in transition. Pulls up. Cornelius the rebound. Robin, we have seen each of these teams play two conference tournament games each on this floor, in this building, with loud crowds around them. This is a championship game, so does the mindset change at all? Not really. I mean, you take a game at a time. To get yourself to this position, to get in the final, it's just another game. You want to play the same way you played the others that resulted in the success of you being here. Uh, both teams really scrapping hard. That last bucket by Jackie Carmen, the three-pointer, she she has kind of struggled, in my opinion, throughout this tournament. And Wofford really needs her energy and that senior leadership to show up for them to be successful today. Raven Thompson. Fabulous freshman out of the Atlanta area. Drives inside on Matthews. And a shot clock violation. Carriers can score. One of the best in the SoCon at that. And they can defend as well. Jimmy Garrity, a remarkable run. You really can't talk more about it. And just look at this series. Before he arrived, Wofford had beaten Chattanooga just two times in 
their history. Both had actually come in the SOCON tournament right around the turn of the century. This is their 61st game. It's a 52 to 8 series lead Chattanooga. Jimmy Garrity has led six of those Wofford wins during his time facing the Mocs. Carmen again. Couple of three pointers for the fifth year senior out of Twinsburg, Ohio. She returned this year for a moment like this. It's a, that was a tough shot because Yaz Dean was really right in her face in terms of the de defending and, and was hopeful to get a block on that, but there's a great answer right there from Chattanooga from Addie Grace Porter. That's what I expect to say throughout the day. Smallest player on the court might have the biggest heart in all of SoCon basketball. What a season she has had in her sophomore campaign with the Mox. Big answer right there after the Wofford 6-0 run. Shot clock at 10. Matthews. Porter. Right around seven rebounds a game, and you emphasize that, and also mention she's five feet four. Yeah, that rebounding is effort. It's heart. It's uh, desire. It's want. It's basically you want to get to the glass. You want to get those the boards. Scramble for the ball. Schultz and Porter. A couple of scrappy players. Annabelle Schultz. She was a star in the semifinal game here in her hometown of Asheville. She played at Irwin High. Not all that far from the front door of this arena. Uh, we highlighted her as one of the watch players, and that's exactly why it's her desire to get the ball. She's in on most hustle plays, and she'll take the ball away from you if you're not careful. Rachel Rose, cross-court pass. Matthews. Patton can hit from outside and inside. So can Matthews. Wofford's running a system in which they're getting the focus to one side of the floor, and in particular when the ball comes into Lily Hatton, you're seeing Helen Matthews pop out beyond that three-point line, and she's had three open looks there, that one going down for her from behind the arc. Gotta go the other way. Nine Wofford points. Over the first five, Chattanooga turnover. The Wofford Terriers. That have been forced. Wofford, they're going to try to force those live ball turnovers, which, again, reflective of the fact that the Chattanooga ladies are a little tight right now. Those forced ball turnovers, first live ball turnovers, you can see that reflected in the number of turnovers that Wofford already has gathered and the number, the points they've been able to generate from that. You see the Woffords for six turnovers. Nine points off of that. And frankly, Chattanooga's only had three field goal attempts. So some of those turnovers then also limiting their opportunities to take shots. Matthews has already surpassed her point total of five in their semifinal game against UNCG. The Terrier lead is seven. The first turnover of the game came up right after the opening tip on a backcourt for the Terriers. Since then, they have been able to force the issue with the Mox. Olive Stoddard can't get it to go down. Here come the Terriers. Hatton driving on the freshman, Thompson. Matthews, the travel. It'll be a turnover. That's the second on Wofford. You can see that Wofford set up five out. They want to draw the post defenders away from the basket, create that space. And also, you're taking your defense farther out so they have a longer distance to go to come help. That inevitably leaves some open looks from the perimeter. Thompson behind a screen from Cornelius. Much needed. Raven Thompson, a 53% shooter, hits the mid-range. She matched her career high. Six times this season, she scored 23 points. That was her total in their semifinal win against ETSU. As they played what their head coach called their best defensive game of the year. They limited their arch rival to just 40 points. They'll try to get a stop here. Thompson defends Matthews, the junior from New Zealand, who reverses. Annabelle Schultz was the big story on Friday for Wofford. Maybe this is Helen Matthews' game. Well, Helen Matthews has struggled throughout the first two games of this tournament. Seemed to be out of sync. Some of that was foul trouble early in both those games, but... Her offensive abilities are on display in this game so far. Thompson driving on Rachel Rose. From out front, Olive Stoddard. 
Missing again. She's a 38% three-point shooter. Matthews has scored the past eight Wofford points. They look to build on their biggest lead of the game. You see that five-out offense by Wofford. So much space in which to maneuver, whether it's cuts, lanes to the basket, or frankly, again, help has to come a long way. Schultz. She's 34% beyond the arc. Ten-point advantage. Biggest in this opening quarter, under two to go. And that resulted from Eddie Grace Porter sinking down, anticipating needing the help in the post play. And she had just enough space at Annabelle Schultz to get that shot off. Quiet start for Yaz Waziradine. She's now 0 for 2 from the field. Top scorer for this Mox team. Nearly 16 a game. Rose coming to the Wofford campus from USC Upstate. Hatton can't get the bounce. Thompson a big rebound. Part of her freshman season included nearly seven a game. It has with zero, Dean. I, I feel like in, at least in the semifinal game, she was slow to heat up as well. And then as she got into the second, third quarter, you saw more of her offensive weaponry coming alive. Jackie Carmen along with Hatton and Matthews and Schultz on the team a couple of years ago. They played Mercer. Bears pulled away to the championship win. Olive Stoddard on the penetration. Scoops. Cuts the deficit to eight with under a minute to go. On that game a couple of years ago, Mercer already had, had banked some Southern Conference championships. They had Bounce back from what had not been a good year the year before. I'm not going to say Wofford was deer in headlights, but a first experience can always be a shaky one on this kind of stage. Maybe they're a little bit more of a poised team this time. They've shown it so far, though Hatton can't get it to go. And Helen Matthews, as she has been like to do this weekend, picking up the personal foul. And that'll be her first. What? And the first on the Wofford team. Another thing that I think Wofford has going for them is the confidence they gained throughout this season with a program record and wins of 22. Top seed in the conference, something they had not been before. So you see that confident energy on the floor. A regular season sweep of Chattanooga, which just a couple of years ago would have been unheard of. Under five to go in the quarter. Thompson, strong move. Matthews took it away. Let's see if it goes. Not sure it would have counted anyway. Wofford Terriers, a fast start. They lead by eight after one. Jimmy Garrity and his team could perhaps deliver a first ever SOCOM. We are having a blast. It's like one point, two points, right down to the wire. And the intention is really building now because, of course, we've got the championship happening for the women. Semifinals this afternoon. Everything is getting closer and closer. And the excitement is building. And the games are getting better and better and better. If you're not here, I don't know where you are. <laughs> when are we going to get you out here on the court? Because you're a former Tampa Bay Buccaneer cheerleader. I'm proud of as a squash in 1978. I can't run like that anymore. <laughs> incredible atmosphere the entire weekend. We're looking forward to another great one right now, Pete. Aaron, you summed it up in two words. Incredible atmosphere. And Ingalls Market's a gigantic part of that here at the Ingalls Southern Conference Basketball Championships. Five straight points for the Chattanooga Mox. Their coach energetic. His team playing that way to start the second quarter. Off the miss by Matthews. A Mox team that was down by ten over the opening ten minutes. Chance to cut into that, but Porter, a turnover. That'll be number seven. A Chattanooga turning up the pressure with their defense. It's extending the floor, but this is offensive pressure as well with Addie Grace Porter hitting the three and then the steal by Murphy. Turning up the energy, a Mox team. Looking to get to the 20 win threshold. Matthews, 10 on the shot clock. Explores inside with a spin. Cornelius defending well, along with Carson Murphy, the transfer from Montana. A little big with Murphy and Cornelius. Maybe that's the way to approach the Wofford team because 
despite her size, Porter a good wing defender. Lazira Dean pretty good. Olive's daughter as well. Yeah, I think that's a great adjustment by Sean Poppy, especially since Helen Matthews had, had been able to get to the interior with a little bit smaller defender on her. This now creates a significant height advantage for Chattanooga, which may turn into either better rebounding or more scoring. Murphy has seen some action so far in the tournament. Scored six points in their semifinal win over Furman on Thursday. Out of bounds it goes. It'll stay in this end. And Murphy will get a breather, but she has come in, provided a spark for the team. Yeah, she played about nine minutes a game, but does give a spark for the team. Uh, gives Raven Thompson an opportunity to take get quick breathers on the bench. As you saw Thompson come back in and play some Murphy. Sean Poppy, again, showing the energy on the floor that he brings to this Chattanooga program as their head coach, Rose, with the answer. That breaks the Chattanooga scoring run. I thought Poppy the other day, as he was talking about his team getting ready to play for a championship, he, he said, you know, I've had success in my career, but it's not like I have multiple championship rings, but the first time I met with the team after talking to them, I may have convinced them that I've won a bunch of championships. Well, by gosh, I'm going to convince them they can win one on Sunday. Was Ziradine pump fake to lose Hatton. Cornelius long range. Gets her own rebound. Here's Was Ziradine. Yes, Was Ziradine. I was surprised she didn't pull the trigger on the first one, but perhaps thought that Hatton might be able to get enough of an angle to get a block. Good patience, good offensive rebounding by Cornelius and rotating it out to the wide open. Yes, Was Ziradine. Matthews had a run of eight straight points. Give her 10 of the game with an and one upcoming. Uh, Helen Matthews is a different player today than we have seen in the previous two games. Her ability to attack the basket has been outstanding. She draws a foul on Abby Cornelius. And again, another potential problem for Sean Poppy if, in particular, Abby Cornelius gets into big foul trouble. Great point. 66 percent for Matthews, the native of New Zealand, and Aaron has more. Coach Garrity said that Helen Matthews is just the X factor for this team. He said that he's always felt like she's had all conference talent. It's just taken a little while for her to get comfortable. She's an overseas player, international player from Australia, and he said that she came in with her COVID year, and it was a really big adjustment for her, but she's really gotten more comfortable this year. She's found her rhythm. Things have slowed down, and she's really excelled this season. Murphy can't get it to go. Rebound by Carmen, pushing the pace. Porter doing a nice job defending, and Murphy helping out. Uh, Jackie Carter doing a little spying on the inside. Thought she might be able to get that rebounded outlet pass. Matthews hits the net. It'll be a charge on Porter. Nice job by Helen Matthews standing in. and 17 championship teams, the three-time all-tournament selection, and she and Abby Cornelius have something in common. Two of three players with over 1,000 points, over 900 rebounds, and over 100 blocks. So Abby Cornelius joining some rarefied company. What a great player, Jasmine Joyner. She was on the last team for Chattanooga that played for a championship, 2017. Raven Thompson. Been a bit of a tough start for the freshman of the year, but that should help. Uh, it's back to a four-point game. That was a tough shot. She used her body well. We've seen that throughout the tournament. Uh, very aggressive in her attack of the basket that time, getting in where she needed to to put the ball up on the square. Alessada defends Rose. Alessada recruited, as so many were during the pandemic, especially those from overseas. Online essentially by Chattanooga. She's from Iceland. Hatton can't get it to go down. Porter in the box. Here they come. Chattanooga seemed to be reeling in the opening quarter down 10. They've got a chance to pull within two, maybe one. I talked to Sean Poppy yesterday. I said, Who are you going to put on Rose? She's the player of the year. He, he said, We'll probably go with Olaf's daughter. She's a really good defender. She has a little more length. And we're seeing her be successful so far in that Rose is not been able to get in her rhythm 
Just three points on the day up to this point. Carmen from the outside. Waziruddin defended her well. Chattanooga, the best defensive team in the SOCON. They allow fewer than 60 points a game. They're a team that can force some turnovers as well. Now that defense really has stepped up here, stemmed the tide on that side, and you know, they're picking it up offensively as the Mox freshman Brooklyn and Crouch checks into the contest. I feel like we saw this the second quarter when Chattanooga was playing ETSU, that first quarter kind of trying to get a feel for things, but the second quarter, their defense dictated the outcome of that quarter and that 18-2 result. Crouch inside. Thompson able to corral. Shot clock under 10. Crouch out front. Quarter. Great effort, but back over to Wofford. Crouch just a 21% three-point shooter, but in limited opportunities as she'll head to the bench. Gave a brief rest for Olive Stoddard, who checks back in. Olive Stoddard at about 5'9", obviously a, a bigger defender than the 5'7 Crouch, and that may be part of Sean Poppy's reasoning for getting her back in there so quickly. On all daughter's assignment, you can tell by the way she's standing here out with Rose, she's vir virtually space guarding. She's not going to drop in and help. She is, her assignment is do not let the player of the year in the Southern Conference get any easy looks. That got to a six-point lead for a Terrier team that is having a special season. Cornelius, oh, a nice little move just before she put it up and in. Cornelius, as I said in the beginning, she's she's not always recognized for the things that she brings to the table. Usually unnoticed, but has ability to make a make things change on the floor. Still plenty of time on the shot clock for the Terriers. Carmen driving past Waziruddin kicks to Matthews. Helen Matthews feeling it so far. What a start for Matthews. Her second SOCON tourney title game. She's got 13. Porter thought about it. Olive Stoddard out high. Thompson crossing over. Freshman on senior. She drives on Hatton. Here's Porter from the left wing. Addie Grace Porter. Good recovery by Raven Thompson. Rachel Rose got her hands in there. We've seen that time and again in the tournament where she's able to tie the ball up. But Raven Thompson regaining recovery on that and kicking it out to the open Addie Grace Porter. Porter really hadn't done a whole lot of scoring in the first two tourney games. They didn't necessarily need her. Seven points the other day against ETSU. Shot clock at five, under three to go before the half. How about a bank? Everything falling for Harold Matthews today. I think, I think the offensive set is five spread, get it to Helen, get out of her way. Had her career high last year in this tournament, 23-point game against Western Carolina. Jeez. Roughly two-thirds of the way to that in the opening half, 16 points. Waziruddin, Schultz, travel is the call. Maybe Olive's daughter you would call the best defender for Chattanooga. Schultz getting the assignment of the top scorer for Chattanooga. Yeah, let's go back to the Helen Matthews shot. She didn't have anywhere to go in terms of getting to the basket, but her three-point shooting today is being done with tremendous confidence. Jackie Carmen. What it would mean to her and Lily Hatton with the ball to close out their Wofford careers, not only having been key parts of building this program into a title contender, but bringing home the first ever SOCON Tourney Champions Trophy. Olive Sauter, open. Thompson, defended by Carmen. And the freshman from Atlanta out of Langston Hughes, Raven Thompson will head to the line. Raven Thompson, such a physical player, and in that particular exchange, she was actually on her way, try, almost made a cut, but was able to gather the ball, the pass from Porter. But because she had that head of steam, 
Jackie Carmen was behind her. Thompson, 82% on free throws. Topping this Chattanooga team in her freshman season. That was just the third combined foul in the quarter. Wofford was two. Chattanooga was one. Carmen, her first of the game. Three-point advantage for the Wofford Terriers. Briefly seen Jeray Smith as the only reserve for Wofford in this game. They pretty much stuck with their starting five. Rachel Rose quiet so far, tries to get the assist. Hatton couldn't handle it. So Rose hasn't made the impact scoring that she usually does. For Jackie Carmen, their second leading scorer, eight points. The big story has been the woman standing to the left of Rachel Rose, Helen Matthews. A game for her, 16 points, leads all scores. I think with, for Jer Jimmy Garrity and his squad that in each of these games, they've had a different player step up and be that impact player. First game was Rachel Rose put on a clinic. Second game was Annabelle Schultz, and now we're seeing Helen Matthews. So he has different people that will step up and make an impact. He doesn't have to rely on just one or two. But Porter has tied us up at 29. Rose. Rachel Rose just three points so far, although that was just her second shot attempt from the field. Chad is only lead for Chattanooga, a 2 0 advantage. Under 10 to go in the half. Olive Stoddard swings it. Waziridine. Matthews defends. Under five to go. Cornelius, the reverse. And the Mox will take a two-point advantage into the halftime locker room. Talk about changing the storyline from quarter one. Chattanooga started hitting threes. She was four of five from behind the arc. And each of these shots were open because the defense was collapsing to the inside. Focus more on Wazir Dean and Cornelius. So our third quarter underway. Double-figure score for each team. Matthews and Porter. Shot clock at 10. Rose. Let's we'll see what adjustment Jimmy Garrity makes to try to get her going. Perhaps Hatton as well. From the outside. Leaves it short. Thompson has it. Mock's biggest lead in the opening half. The halftime score. A couple of two-point advantages early in the first quarter and late in the second. Lily Hatton, those shots were falling for her in the previous two games, the quarterfinals and the semifinals. But again, because... Olaf's daughter, she switched off on her, but has the ability to pressure all the way out. Making it more difficult for Hatton to hit some of those threes that gave her team a lift in the previous games. Rose in the corner, Matthews. 16 points combined in the first two games this weekend. 15 so far today. Thompson knocking it away. Get past Rose, who defends with Matthews. That was a great job by Raven Thompson, just anticipating. And I think coming up behind Helen Matthews, who's trying to clear some space in a little crowded area on that right side of the floor. Annabelle Schultz, 17 points on Friday. Just three so far. Another stop for Chattanooga. Mox taking care of the basketball much better as that first half continued. They had six turnovers in the first five minutes, just two over the final 15. Carmen, though, forcing it right there. Takes it away. Senior. 33 steals on the season coming in. Wofford hit five of their first six three-point attempts. Just one of their past six. Matthews will try from afar. And Porter will bring it the other way. Uh, Matthews didn't really have anywhere to go with the ball, so she decided to take the shot way off on that one. Again, I think Chattanooga's defense has made a big difference and is starting to create that offense for them. Cornelius rising to the occasion. Her final game is a mock. She's had to deal with injuries, but she has hung in there through a coaching change, and she just gave her team their largest lead. We've got a timeout on the court. Well, when your defense starts doing good things, it creates a lot of movement.
he stats how many paint touches they get. And he said in the second quarter, they had just 17. He likes that number to be more around 25. So that was the difference for him between the first and the second quarter of action. Definitely wants to see his offense flow a little bit more. 11-01 coming out of the second quarter to this point. Hatton and Rose, one for six combined on three-point attempts. Pretty big number right there. Yeah, and, and I can see every reason why Jimmy Garrity upset in that huddle because his team has gotten very flat. They're content with that five out. They're putting up outside shots. And they have not been able to get to the interior of the defense very often, and it's showing in the scoring column. One of the shot clock. Harmon beats the buzzer. Well, the Terriers, the good news to them was they got the ball. Trouble is, they looked up and saw just one second, but Jackie Carmen looked like for a moment she had a hard time finding the handle. Yeah, uh, a good screen set her up for that. So, yes, yeah, Azir Dean out of the play, and that then gave Carmen an open short jumper. Pull up by Wazir Dean, rattles it home. Mid range jumper to the Stetson transfer. Back out to a six point advantage after Wofford had gotten its first points of this third quarter just before. Uh, throughout the game, keep an eye on Ola's daughter and, and how she's defending Rose off the ball. She is, as I spoke of earlier in this game, she's face guarding her. She has one assignment. She's not dropping into help. And even there, her size altered that shot for Rose, and then she turned immediately and had to box out. Thompson can't get it to go. Hatton deflecting to Rose. Porter defends. Rose probably happy to see someone in front of her other than Olive's daughter. Matthews keeping her team in it. What a game for Helen Matthews. Now three of four beyond the arc. She's got 18. That's a big lift for Wofford. They needed that basket. And their defense, as Chattanooga has, their defense is getting a little more heated. Well, Dean taken away by Schultz. Remember Schultz, seven steals in the semifinal game. Rose lost it, got it back, and scores it. And now Sean Poppy, the one we may see animated with his team around him. Although generally, from the time it tips off, he's animated regardless of what's going on. It appears that part of the chess match is pretty pretty well represented in the defensive response we have seen by the Terriers. Yeah, Lawford doing a better job, especially in this third quarter of taking away those driving lanes. Chattanooga's still up 14 to 8 in terms of paint points, but that number dwindled a bunch over this last few minutes. Well, Zeradine had the hand of Schultz in her face, gets it to go down. Back out to a six point advantage. Terriers led by as many as 10 and half number one. Matthews. Thompson defends. Matthews can't get the force. Porter was able to box out Hatton. Abby Grace Porter now with her seventh rebound on the day. They'll make that eight. She just has an uncanny ability to sneak under the bigger rebounders and get those loose ball opportunities. Off the miss by was Irredeen. Wofford will get it back. Maddie Grace Porter, just five feet four. And we've talked at length how impressive it is that she's able to average about seven rebounds a game. And came into this tournament leading the SOCON in minutes played. She essentially does not leave the court. Matthews driving on Cornelius. Goes right by her. Great job by Helen Matthews. She's able to get a step or two ahead of Cornelius. Abby Cornelius does have that long reach, but the ball is protected all the way up. And Helen out, out, able to finish close in. Thompson on Schultz. First foul in the quarter committed on either team. Annabelle Schultz picks up her first. Uh, Helen Matthews on this pass. She reads that Abby Cornelius coming out at her just extends a little further than she should have with the closeout and 
Matthews able to go right around her. Helen Matthews right now eight points, so just shy of her, uh, sorry, 20 points, just above her average by about 11. Today's her day, as we said before, that there's been a different Wofford player to step up in each of these games, and I think that's a comfort for Jimmy Garrity that it's not any one player that has to show it for each and every game. Carmen tried to take matters into her own hands. We'll stay on the Wofford end. And what is probably going to be a tight game all the way down the stretch. We may look back to that moment in the third period that the overturned basket on the shot clock situation for Wofford. Who knows if those two points could decide this ball game. They were on the board for a while, but they went to the review and took them away. Matthews, Cornelius hit the deck. Third personal on Helen Matthews. Abby Cornelius anticipating that Helen Matthews again is going to try to take the ball to the basket. They'll probably wave that one off when they review later. Well, she was inside the restricted area. However, I believe that she has had established position. Let's we'll see what the officials do with that. Waziradine. Matthews picks up the defense. Right now with three fouls and Waziradine taking advantage of it. That was a great move by Waziradine. She had Lily Hatton coming over to help, but split the defender is able to hang in the air in order to get that shot to go. Biggest lead of the game for Chattanooga. 18-point swing since the opening half. No for Rose. Thompson on the rebound. Under three to play here in the third quarter. Porter, able to recover. Tough defender on her in Rose. Porter's made four three-pointers in the game. Shot clock coming up on five. Porter fouled on her way to the hoop. It's a good take by Addie Grace Porter. She really didn't have anywhere, any outlets for her when she was dribbling around, trying to find some space, so instead she takes Attacks the basket. Rachel Rose thought she had more ball than arm, but that's now sending Rose to the bench. First personal on Rose. She'll get a breather maybe till the end of the quarter. Jare Smith played earlier in the game for the Terriers back out there, but Wofford has relied on its starting five. Smith, the only player who has subbed in. They've used just six players in this game. And could that be an issue even further in in terms of a team? Not that Chattanooga's done much better. They've used seven. Nine-point lead. Matthews tries to add on. And Waziradine the rebound. Yaz Waziradine. It's been a big story in this third quarter of play. She has ten. Porter with the ball, thirteen. Thompson also in double figures with 10. That's her with the ball, defended by Matthews. Again, Matthews in some foul trouble. Porter out front, tries again. Thompson, wave it off as Matthews hit the deck. Uh, Thompson did dip that shoulder a little bit, initiated that contact. The right call by the officials, off the rebound. See Helen just setting up, but there was that contact off the shoulder from Raven Thompson. First on Thompson. Low foul game for the most part. Mox one team foul in the third quarter. Terriers have three. Carmen took a shot to the face and was irredeemed. We'll pick up the personal. They may review that because of contact to the face or no, they're just calling a common foul. First on Waziradine. See right here, Waziradine just bring her hand down as she was defending what she thought might be a shot. Smith the pull up, her first attempt, can't get it to go down. Terriers have managed seven points since halftime as the Mox have built on the two point advantage they had at the break. Or some high low. 
stands up there instead handing off to Olofstadter. Nice floater by Sengren Olofstadter. Sean Poppy runs a bit of a what I call the old school three-man weave. And with that, there's about four or five different options they're looking for. Schultz leaves it short. Mox get the ball back with their biggest lead, 11 points. See, just a weave kind of situation. Defenders get hung up up high. And Olofsson are taking it in, really among some help defense, but nice floater up off the glass. Warriors try to get a stop. They give up about 65 points a season. Uh, 65 points a game during the season. Thompson looked on the baseline. Shot clock coming up on five. Hatton knocks it out of bounds. With four on the shot clock and just under 30 seconds remaining in our third quarter. Helen Matthews trying again to draw another charge. This time, not enough contact off a of Raven, and the officials let it play. Waziradine to beat the shot clock. Friendly bounce. The lead grows to 13 on a 9-0 run. Terriers will play for a final shot. Coming up on five to go in the quarter. Smith lobbing for Hatton. Hatton is yet to score. And the third quarter comes to an end. Chattanooga Mox. They were thunderous down the stretch in quarter number two to take the lead. They built upon it mightily in the third. You know, Kai's going to be on stool duty. He's going to take your chair to the huddle now each time out. And Coach Poppy said he wasn't too sure about how Kai would handle that, but he's done a great job. He's very good about taking out the, the chair every time and being where he needs to be. And he's a huge support system for the team. The girls really take to him. Young Coach Poppy. I could see, Aaron, the next uh, aspect of his growth would be give him a clipboard to go along with his chair duties to start the fourth quarter. Matthews off the turnover from Cornelius. Hensho head of the line. And this is a little sloppy exchange by Chattanooga, but once again, Ellen Matthews picking the team up, really putting them on her shoulders. Soft passing. Overshot by the offense. Matching her career high. Had 23 on this floor in the opening round last year against Western Carolina. Big game player in a big game. Terriers back within 10. Still up. Long road ahead for them to try to win their first ever Southern Conference tournament title. Thompson out high. Schultz defending. Shot clock at 10. Porter rows in front of her. Waziradi. She picked up the score in the third quarter. Porter's been good all game long. Carmen will let it go out. That essentially works the turn over, though. Mox take time off the clock with a 10 point advantage. Two key factors for Chenna's success in this last quarter. The fact that they have 24 defensive rebounds held Wofford to just 15 shots with three made. This quarter, we're seeing some different action from Wofford and certainly finding ways to get Rachel Rose open looks. That could be huge. She hits the three. Her first. Rachel Rose now. Let's see. Intermission. First three made. For Porter, two of three for the game, eight points. Suddenly, Chattanooga's lead reduced to seven, and they turn it over. Ox giving it up for a 13th time of the game. Rose, you can tell she wants to make an impact in this game. So does Hatton. Cornelius takes it off the floor. Now that could have raised the roof if Lily Hatton hit that shot on this little run that Wofford's making right now. Waziradine can't answer. Hatton gets the rebound. Lily Hatton doesn't want this to be her final game as a Wofford Terrier. Matthews, the junior, crossing over on Thompson. Off the spin. And Cornelius again with a rebound. 
Baron Thompson did a nice job that time of just being in the way enough. Helen Matthews trying to step around her a little too strong on the shot, but Raven Thompson continues to stay out of foul trouble as Matthews attacks the basket. From the outside, Raven Thompson. Huge bucket for the Mocs. Freshman of the year now at 10, 13 points. Hatton strong drive. Offensive fouls the call. Abby Cornell is standing in, taking the charge. That one she could see. The determination was that Lily Hatton did indeed commit the charge. Uh, Abby Cornelia is set up outside that restricted zone. We saw that on the replay before they went into the timeout, but because Jimmy Garrity wanted to appeal it, they went to the review monitor and came out in favor of Chattanooga and the charge. Traveling is the call. It's kind of a freezing time there for a split second. Wasn't sure what was going on. Then the whistle came. Seen this a couple times with Wofford's defense collapsing down to those block areas. Well, Yaz Wazir Dean has gotten hung up there. This time, Raven Thompson. They're doing a good job in the rotation, not letting anything easy near the basket develop. Matthews is on the bulk of the scoring. For the Terriers, fouled by Cornelius. She scored 23 of their 42 points. Has a chance to add on and establish a new career high. That's a second on Abby Cornelius. Of note, once these teams, if they each reach five team fouls, Wofford, 73% on free throws, Chattanooga, 76. And a new career high for Helen Matthews, the junior, 24 points. What a game she's had at just the right time, but obviously Terriers need something more from Rose, Carmen, and Hatton. Their top three scores. Porter off the pass from Raven Johnson, who was hung up. Raven Thompson was hung up over on the side. Here's Porter. Thompson off the fake. Driving past Rose. Matthews down. And a foul is called. And... Of course, you see a knee brace on the right leg of Matthews. Not sure what happened there. Let's see if she's okay. Let's see what happened here. On the drive, oh, Matthews trying to get in to defend. Cornelius just got hung up. Maybe rolled that ankle a little bit. Good help dive, yet yeah, stepped on Cornelius's ankle, or Cornelius's foot, and then rolled her ankle. Raven Thompson, her first SOCON tournament and championship game, now has 15 points. Hatton for Wofford, by the way, picked up her second personal foul. Here in the quarter, Terriers with two, likewise for Chattanooga. Rose crossing over on Olive Sauter. Kicks on the wing. Matthews, no. Hatton swatting the rebound out high. Terriers will reset. It's a good tap out by Lily Hatton. She had couldn't quite get to the ball to secure it, but she had the height advantage in which to knock it out. Matthews exploring down low. Shot clock under 10. Matthews from outside. Another rebound for Thompson. Or even Thompson in this ball game. Along with her teammates, Cornelius and Porter of eight apiece, has seven. Good job on the boards by that trio. Mox have out rebounded the Terriers by 11. Thompson works down low. Rose comes away with it. Tough shot. And again, seeing a couple white jerseys collapsing to Thompson. Down on the paint. Rose from the outside. Another three for the Scranton, Pennsylvania native. Wofford back within seven. They got that close in the third quarter. Big lift. And I think it's just a, a determination now by Rachel Rose. She's going to try to get shots any way she can. Olive's daughter, Waziradine, the pull-up. 
when they needed an answer in the second half, Yaz Waziruddin has provided it. She's a was a leading scorer at Stetson before transferring to Chattanooga. She has big game abilities. And Abby Cornelius with the tie-up. Arrow keeps it in the Wofford end. 4.35 to go. Impressive season for Wofford. Ten wins in conference play to get their first ever number one seed. They've won 22 so far, best in their D1 history. And among the best in their program history. They were NIA, then NCAA Division II briefly in the 90s. Not that time for Matthew. When D1 in 95 joined the Southern Conference a couple of years later, trying to make an impact in women's basketball. They've certainly grown their program under Jimmy Garrity in year number seven. Cornelius was shelf out high defending her. Coming up on four to go, Waziridi. And Matthews on the rebound. She's having a fantastic game. Offord has numbers. Matthews losing it. Carmen there. Fires from outside. Schultz going after a loose ball, committing the personal foul. The second on the Asheville native. Both Thompson and Addie Grace Porter there for the rebound as Porter brings the ball down and the contact from Schultz was on Porter. Terriers, they played only six players, Chattanooga just seven, but Wofford it just looks like fatigue might be setting in. They've left several three-point attempts shy, especially in the second half. Backdoor, Porter. Hatton got all ball. Then Carmen is fouled by Ellis That was a tough take by Addie Porter. And the bench for Chattanooga, not real happy about it, as are the fans, very unhappy about it. A strong take here on that backdoor cut, but Lily Hatton, with her stretch, her reach, is able to get a piece of the ball. Terrier team that did get to postseason play beyond the SOCON tourney last year, their first ever women's NIT, but this time they want to go to the big dance. They're down by nine, with under three and a half to play in the fourth. Rose, five on the shot clock. Rachel Rose, another three-pointer, her big, third of the second half. Big, big, big. Big basket set up by Lily Hatton and the screen up high. Actually Rachel a Rose. long two, I beg your pardon, a long two. Rachel Rose does not lead a lot of daylight. We've seen that time and again throughout this tournament. Chattanooga's lead again reduced to seven. They're up by as many as 13 at one point. Rose defending Porter. Shot clock at five. Thompson looking low. Now she drives. Matthews called for the block. Number four. Helen Matthews has had a career day scoring-wise with 25 points, but Jimmy Garrity has to leave her in there with 2.37 to go. Let's see if Chattanooga... Tries to go to work on her. She's nowhere near Lazaridine with the ball. Schultz went for the steal. She commits her third. Now Chattanooga will be shooting from this point forward any, on any fouls. Yes, Lazaridine, a second team all A Sun player a year ago at Stetson. Came in here as a first team all SOCON performer this season. Marietta, Georgia, so really not all that far. A 575 from her hometown to where she's finishing up her college basketball career. And she delivers a couple of big free throws here with two and a half to go. Nine point deficit for the Terriers with the ball. Their men's team won a thriller with a late rally last night. Can their women's team come from either further back in the closing stages here this afternoon? Robert. Matthews on Thompson. Wofford using a lot of clock in that possession, trying to set the play up. And I feel like Chattanooga is really trying to lock down on defense, make them have to use more clock than they want to, and taking Matthews and, and Rose, really the two, out of any scoring options. 
that's just what Chattanooga is going to try to do, you would think. With this lead, milk some clock. Carmen came out to chase Porter. Hatton defends the guard. Was Iridean. Still plenty of time on the shot clock for the Mox. Porter Thompson. Pretty feed. Nice finish. Nice leap off from Annie Porter to Thompson. Drawing the defense. She knew it. She was getting in there. That's what she wanted to do. Rejection by Cornelius. Thompson was Iridean ahead. She'll take it herself as Matthews defends. And a foul is called. And that'll be the fifth on Helen Matthews of Wofford. The fans are excited on the Chattanooga side, but this possession here with Addie Grace Porter driving the baseline, draws Lily Hatton as a defender and able to split underneath of her to get the ball in for the score. Helen Matthews. Doing her part, the junior guard from down under. A career game for her, but obviously that's the furthest thing from her mind. 25 points as she fouls out with 125 to go. Well, a lot of emotion on her face. I think some of that is fouling out. Some of that is just having to work through pain and, and twisting her ankle. And, you know, every championship game hurts. Regardless of which team you are, if you can't come out on top, it hurts. Raven Thompson, freshman of the year, Sigrin Olafsdottir. Great defensive effort throughout this tournament. And right there signifying what Chattanooga has been all about this weekend and throughout the campaign in their first year under Sean Poppy. Well, that was a big steal, great anticipation. I think the, the final nail for Chattanooga, just anticipating the ball is going to come to her player. She's been face guarding and hunting Rachel Rose the entire ball game. Misses on the first free throw. But look for Wofford now to try to push shots up in a hurry, in which case they're also going to have to crash the boards, get some offensive rebounds. Biggest lead for the Mox. Rose forcing it. Alice out her call for the foul. I had to wonder growing up in Iceland, Sigrid Olive's daughter, if she'd ever even heard of Chattanooga, Tennessee until the whole basketball thing came in the picture. Sean Poppy actually sitting down, which isn't necessarily his mode during games, and for a moment at least he's back on his feet, but also looking about as relaxed as you'll ever see him <laughs> during a game or in a practice. We were worn out just watching their Wednesday practice, which was just basically a glorified shoot around, but he was out running some of his players at times. Yeah, yeah he, was, he liked to get in the drills, you could tell. There was nonstop energy, nonstop chatter on the floor. Some of what he's some of what he's brought to this Chattanooga team to put them back in this position to win their 19th Southern Conference Championship. Rachel Rose, good second half, but Chattanooga had a plan for her and it worked well 15 points She came in averaging about 17, but she was never a factor for that matter really Carmen and Hatton the other big scorers For the Terriers taken out of this game by Chattanooga's defense 12 point lead 102 to go He throws up coming and we told you Chattanooga 76 percent from the line Third on Rose Tough outing for Rachel Rose a lot of credit goes to Sean Poppy and his staff and how they were going to defend her. Player of the year in the Southern Conference had big numbers in the first game and even 15 points in the semifinal when uh, ETSU was trying to take her out of the play. But here today, struggling mightily. Carmen, quick three, not going to go. Thompson, another rebound. Thompson racing ahead, looking to probably give it to Porter. Instead to Cornelius. She'll get it to Porter. Porter quite a day. Career high four made three pointers. She dribbles down time with her second career double double as well in hand. 13 points and 10 boards. Mox fans off to her left behind their bench on their feet. Have to savor a 19th Southern Conference Tournament Championship. And 
and trip number 16 to the NCAA tournament for the Chattanooga women's program. What success they've had. Their first title game since 2017. Rose trying to add another three. Hatton the rebound. And she gets it to go to cut the deficit to 10. Uh, still battling the Walford Terriers. They really have had a fantastic year, a great run. And there was a, ch a determination to Chattanooga on the floor today. And it was exhibit all across the way. You see Sean Poppy getting hogs, giving hogs as this game winds out. Your 2023 Women's Southern Conference champion, the Chattanooga Mocks.